Good morning. Welcome to Victory Memorial. Youth will have a movie tonight at 6 in the youth room. Bring some snacks and bring a friend. They hope to see you there. See you and saw you at the poll are this Wednesday. See you at the poll will be held at both the junior high and the high school with donuts and juice being served at 7 and student-led prayer beginning at 7.30. Saw you at the poll will be held at the new Victory Center north of Walmart with the food, Larry Jeffus Dunes Burgers, being served at 5.30 p.m. and worship starting at 7. Everyone in the community is invited to attend either event regardless of age. Prayer and fasting. The Heartland Conference of the Global Methodist Church, this is the conference that Victory Memorial is now in, will officially launch on October 1st. To help launch it, the Heartland Prayer Team is issuing a challenge to Heartland GMC congregations to join in a 21-day period of prayer and fasting beginning on the 1st. The church office has fasting guides available so you can participate. Early, sound, early service sound. We would love to have a couple more people learn how to run the soundboard for the 8.30 a.m. service. If this is something you're interested in, let the church office know. Ladies Bible study takes place on Wednesday evenings at 6 and Thursday mornings at 10, both in the fellowship hall. This is open to all ladies in town. They would love for you to join them. Methodist men's breakfast held every Wednesday morning from 6.30 to 7.30 in the fellowship hall. Invite a friend and join them for good food, fellowship, and devotion. Visitors, please leave your contact information on one of the visitor cards found in your pew or text Pastor Dave at 580-649-9190. He would like to follow up with you and support you in your discipleship. Newsletter, if you would like to receive our twice a month newsletter, please get in touch with the church office so we can get you added to our mailing list. Daily devotions and small groups, Pastor Dave encourages everyone to enjoy a quiet time with God each day and to participate in a life group weekly. God is good. All the time. And all the time, God, God is, is good. good. Please join me in the call to worship. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's all stand together and sing Rejoice, the Lord is King.
the Sabbath, a day to rest and to seek your face. We pray that in our worship today, Lord, the songs that we sing, the prayers that we pray, the words that we share together as we worship you will make us stronger, better, more fitted disciples of Jesus. We pray these things today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Hey, it's great to see you. I'm usually sitting right out here with my wife and my, my son, Will, is here today. Make sure you uh, give him a hard time. Uh, he's, he's from over in northeastern Oklahoma right now, and, but he's here today. I am Pastor Dave Jenkins, uh, a retired pastor. For nearly 30 years, I had uh, elders' orders or ordination in the United Methodist Church and serve churches all over the state of Oklahoma. Today, retiring from the local church, we made our home right here in Victor Memorial. And uh, we're very happy to be here. We knew many of you before we came into this congregation, and we certainly knew the, uh, the stories of faithful ministry through Victory Memorial United Methodist Church. I've known people who, are, who were here in the past, and they're, they're long gone to be with the Lord. But I've also known David Player for a long time. After all, when you say, Pastor Dave, I go, yes. <laughs> we share the same name. Uh, his wife's name is Cindy. Guess what my wife's name is? Cindy. Uh, he has a southern accent, and so do I. <laughs> oh, that wrong continent, uh, wrong continent, I'm sorry. <laughs> there are other things. He plays guitar, I play the guitar. Um, he loves the Lord Jesus and lifts up the biblical historic faith, as do I. I staked my life on it. I am now an elder in the um, Global Methodist Church, officially, just like Pastor Dave is as well, just like you have become members of the Global Methodist Church. We've gone through these things together. I've been in this fight and struggle 25, 30 years. Served at six general conferences. Boy, do I have stories to tell. But we're thankful to see what God is doing in this new movement of Wesleyan Christianity among the Methodists. By the way, my great-grandmother was a Methodist preacher in no man's land from 1921 to 1945. She pastored, yes, she pastored. My great-grandfather, he had a, it was a heavy burden to bear, <laughs> being the pastor's husband. She pastored um, several different churches at May, some out in the country at schoolhouses. She pastored Fairview in Beaver County and Catesby. Um, she loved the Lord as well. I'm thankful for God taking the torch from her hand and putting it in mine so that I could bear it. What a blessing it is to be here this morning. David is on vacation and I'm very happy to be here. One of my roles right now is I'm every other weekend I'm in a different church all across northwestern Oklahoma and the Texas Panhandle serving churches that do not have a pastor right now. They ask for your prayers. Leedy. Pond Creek, uh, Fairview in Major County, Woodward, Stratford, Texas, five congregations, and there are many others. You are blessed to have a pastor who went through this disaffiliation process with you, led the way, and said, here is where I live and here is where I stand. We're grateful for that. <clears throat> This morning, um, by design, I usually say, let me preach from one passage of Scripture. Today, it's a New Testament passage, Luke chapter 11. But in doing that, let us also feel the balance of the total Scriptures by also reading something from the Old Testament, Psalm 86. Because I've been a pastor all over the place, 
I have been in every major hospital in the entire region, from Joplin, Missouri, to um, uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico, from Dallas, Fort Worth, clear up to Wichita. Every time I walked in one of those hospital rooms to see people that I love and care about, not all the time, but many times I would read this passage. Psalm 86, a prayer. It says, a prayer of David. Hear me, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am faithful to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Have mercy on me, O Lord. For I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, Lord, for I put my trust in you. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call to you. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. When I am in distress, I call to you because you answer me. Among the gods, there is none like you, Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations that you have made will come and worship before you, O Lord. They will bring glory to your name, for you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I praise you, Lord my God, with all of my heart. I will glorify your name forever. For great is your love towards me. You have delivered me from the depths, from the realm of the dead. Arrogant foes are attacking me, O God. Ruthless people are trying to kill me. They have no regard for you. But you, Lord are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Show me, show your strength in beha on behalf of your servant. Save me because I serve you just as my mother did. Give me a sign of your goodness that my enemies may see it and be put to shame. For you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Ushers, will you come as we prepare to give God his tithes and our offerings? Today, a scripture from Malachi chapter 3 is our um, thought about stewardship. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord. See if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it all. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops. And the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it's ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all of the nations will call you blessed, for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. Missing offering plate. I wonder, I wonder where that offering went to this morning. I set it aside somewhere. So um, I tell you what, just don't worry about it. Oh, darn. I was kind of actually looking forward to using a bucket. <laughs> Thank you. Father, may you bless the giving of these gifts. And indeed, pour out your blessing upon this church, through this church, into the community, and through us out into the whole world. We pray it in Jesus' name with great joy. Amen.
Before we stand to sing the doxology, Barrett, is this your name in here, Barrett Lively? Come over here and stand with me. I have some friends that are very good xylophone players. So let, now, folks on the bells, thank you to you as well. I call you the Southern Bells. But Barrett here, I'm going to give him a new nickname today. His nickname is going to be Sticks. <laughs> Sticks Lively. Keep at it, brother, okay? <laughs> Let's stand, shall we? You can be seated. Thank you.
Now, if we can have the children come, this is one of the things I've enjoyed so much about this congregation, this thing called the Noisy Change for Uganda offering, right? Come on down, folks, and we're going to give that a shot this morning, all right? Here you go. noisy change thing. I've been at least one other congregation in the area that they do this as well, but not near as good as you do it. Not near as noisy. Uh, that's the most organized chaos in the world, married to the other most organized chaos in the world, and that's children's conversation time. You know, a lot of times, guys, I sit right out there by Cindy, and I watch what's going on up here. I'm kind of like Santa Claus. I know who's been naughty and who's been nice, you know. <laughs> Listen, I'm so thankful you're here in worship today. Um, the topic of today's message is prayer. What is prayer? Praying. What is it? Can you, can you describe it? Can you, what? Talking to God. Talking to God, letting God talk to us. That's, that's, that's a good answer. Both of now, here's what I want you to know, short and simple. God desires for us. He longs for us to be in conversation with Him. Just like your best friend. Just like your mom and dad. God wants us to talk to Him. In fact, He commands it. He commands this thing of prayer, this conversation. Uh, there's a kind of conversation, it's called a monologue. Do you know what a monologue is? Mono means one. Log means words. One person speaking. That's a monologue. Talk, 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 talk. Okay, that's not prayer. Prayer is not just us talking to God, and it's not just God talking to us. It's not a monologue. It's a dialogue. That means when we talk to God, He wants to say things to us, and He wants to hear from us. Now, here's, here's a way you can pray. It doesn't have to be fancy words. It doesn't have to be big, huge, complex ideas. It can be as simple as this. Are you ready? Here's, here's one of my prayers. God, I'm here today. I want to hear from you. Here's another prayer. Lord, 
I love you. I do. Here's another prayer. We need to do this from time. God, I'm in trouble and I need your help. God loves all of those kinds of prayers. You can do that. You can do that. And when you do that, you become a son or a daughter of the Lord in conversation with the God who made the universe. Can you believe that? It's hard to believe. Let's pray, shall we? God, we're here today. And we want to hear from you. We want to tell you the things that are on our hearts as well. God, parts of this week we've been, we've been experiencing trouble. We need you. We need help. God, a part of our week is how much we love you. We say we love you today. I pray for these children, every one of their families, their brothers and sisters, their moms and dads, aunts and uncles, grandmas and grandpas, their teachers in school. Lord, I pray for their teachers and their classmates. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you for coming this morning. Pastor Dave Player does several things that are unique, and I, I really have grown to love them. Uh, some people who have known me in my life say, man, you talk too much. You talk it all the time, Pastor Dave Jenkins. And then I met David Player, and I said, I'm safe. <laughs> One of the things that he does is to choose a prayer asking God to illuminate our lives during worship. A prayer of illumination. That prayer is right up here on the screen. Will you join me? Make it your heartfelt prayer. Oh Lord, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Give us grace to receive your truth in faith and love and strength. To follow on the path that you set before us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to sing a wonderful hymn written by Jack Hayford, uh, who's now gone to be with the Lord. But this is a fairly new hymn. I love it. Uh, majesty. Worship His Majesty. Thank you for singing this morning. I told the choir something, I, I truly mean it. A wise person said, the one who sings prays twice. We have a song in our heart. You know, King David loved to play the musical instrument that he had and he would sing to the Lord. God loves that. If you can't carry a tune in a bucket, no problem. The Bible says make a joyful noise or a joyful shout to the Lord. Last Sunday, I was on the campgrounds of the fair, the fairgrounds at um, Winfield, Kansas. I'd been three or four days at the music festival there. I go every year. I'm a fiddle player. I go to see how many fiddle players are there who can knock my hat in the creek. Oh, I was not disappointed, by the way. 
guitar players, every other person you pass at this music festival is carrying a musical instrument. It's, it's kind of hilarious. But there's also just lots of people there who love to listen to good music. It's primarily bluegrass, but it includes all different kinds of things. So Sunday morning when I'm there, everybody else is there. They just have had a long week. They get up and they're bleary-eyed and their breakfast is starting to break camp. My friend Steve Gardner from Manford and I, we pulled out our guitars and we began to sing contemporary Christian songs and old hymns. We even sang, Majesty, worship is majesty. One lady from a, a, a trailer, about three trailers down, she came out of her trailer and she's looking around and she says, that was awesome. I feel like I've been to church. I said, that's my intention. What a blessed time it was, but it's good to be back home as well. Uh, my topic today is prayer taken from Luke chapter 11, 1 through 10, 13. <laughs> I forget how far I went. And I'm thankful to uh, Ashley in the office for helping me with all of the preparations and for the things that you'll find. In your bulletin, by the way, somewhere in this bulletin, there, is, there are sermon notes where you can actually follow me along and take a pen and pencil and write in the blanks which will help you remember what Jesus said about prayer. That's my intention. And then you can take it home with you and stick it in your Bible and through your devotions this week, remember growing in the uh, discipleship of following Jesus and becoming a, a more fruitful prayer warrior. But because we're talking about prayer, I'd like to say one thing. When I came here, David Player and I have been friends for a long time. The ways that we're not alike is that he is an early morning, crack of the dawn, get up at 4.30 and go to praying. Uh, no, I'm not that kind of person. I told him, I said, Dave, this early watch prayer thing, God bless you, but you will never see me there at that, at that event. However, my friend Dave Player, I am passionate about prayer just as a Christian. And so I might be interested in a later watch he laughed out loud and slapped his knee. Oh, I like that idea, he said. And so early in the summer, um, we decided to start a later watch prayer ministry. It meets one day a week. Not, I mean, you know, David Player does nothing in little short increments, right? No, no, he goes whole hog. I'm not sure how they say that in South African, but uh, he goes whole hog. But I said, could we do one day a week? Uh, let's choose Monday evenings at 6 p.m. from 6 to 7. Folks, when we get done with prayer at 7 o'clock, I say, more prayer later, today we go home. So for one hour, we gather in this little room right back over here. You know, that's a chapel. I bring my guitar. We praise God for a couple of songs. And then we take this sheet of paper. It's produced every week. This is the order in which we follow things. On the back side are two columns of nothing but prayer concerns. If you would like for us to be praying for something, call the church office, leave word, write something, put it in the offering plate, and we will begin to pray for you and with you. But better yet, my friends, if you'd like to take a step towards doing something to be a more effective prayer warrior. You don't have to say anything. You can come, join us in here. We're friends and family in Christ. And for an hour, we simply say, Lord, I pray. And then we join our hearts in prayer. I want you to know if your name's ever been on this list, you have been prayed for. I, uh, when I am not here like this last week, I missed Monday night. I missed that time in prayer. You're invited to come and be a part with us. Amen and amen. Luke chapter 11. 
One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. And when he finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray. Just like John taught his disciples. And so Jesus said to them, When you pray, you're to say, Father, hallowed or holy be your name. Let your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us of our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend! Hey, friend! Lend me three loaves of bread. For I have a friend of mine on a journey that's come to me unexpectedly, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside the house says, No, stop, don't bother me. The door's already locked. My children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, Jesus said, even though he will not get up and give you bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of your fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? No. Or if he asks for an egg, will he give him a scorpion? Of course not. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to you who ask of Him? This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. When we first came to this church, it was Christmas Eve. I retired late in December last year. Things had gotten so bad in the United Methodist Church, I said, I've been fighting this battle for 30 years. It's time for me to leave. And my wife said, please, yes, today. <laughs> so we waited till the end of December. And then guess what? Christmas Eve came around and I was a pastor without a cradle. I didn't have, or you know, I didn't have a, a Christmas Eve service to attend to. So we said, here we come, Victor Memorial. And it was a blessed time. We were here uh, sitting up in the balcony the day that you disaffiliated, the day that you took that vote. We were praying, you were watching, sending our love. So here we came on Christmas Eve, and uh, what a blessing that was. But I heard very quickly David Player's voice saying regularly, I have a vision for this church. And a part of that vision is that Victor Memorial will be a house of prayer. To which I wanted to stand up and say, yes! Because when prayer happens, big time things, powerful things happen around us because of God's work. Martin Luther said this about prayer. You know Martin Luther, that guy in the 1500s, the German? Uh, he wrote a lot of things, but one of the things that really impacted me, he said, one can no more be a Christian without praying than to be alive without breathing. I breathe in, prayer. I breathe out, prayer. Jesus' topic today in this passage, prayer. And the Holy Spirit. 
So today, let's see if we have, let's uh, see if we can get to the next slide. Um, the disciples saw Jesus praying. They saw him praying often and regularly. They saw him praying fervently and passionately. They saw him praying with divine purpose. They saw him praying, and out of that prayer came power. And so they said, Lord, teach, teach us. Teach us to pray. So one of the questions I ask when I study a passage of Scripture, I say, so what's going on around this passage, especially in a story like this? What's been happening in the few verses before this? And in chapter 10, three things become a part of the context of this passage. Number one, Jesus sent out, in early chapter 10, sent out the 72 disciples. And he said, go tell people the good news. Don't take much with you. They'll provide everything that you need. He said, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Now, I've put my own little message in this, in a biblical interpretation, and that's this. Doing the Lord's work is important. It is for you, for me, for all of us together, separately, individually. Doing the Lord's work is important, and He sends us out. The second thing that happens in chapter 10 is this parable of the Good Samaritan. You know that, that parable? I could say lots about that. I've been on the road... Uh, between Jerusalem and Jericho with where this supposedly happened. But Jesus told the parable, and in it he said, listen, go and be a good neighbor. You, you be a good neighbor to people around you. I put my own biblical interpretation in this. Being obedient to God's commands, that's very important for all of us. The third thing that happens in chapter 10, see, it's all leading up to this moment about prayer. Jesus is found at the home of Martha and Mary. You know those two sisters? What, were their, what was their brother's name again? I know it. I just need to see if anybody else can come up with it. What was it? Lazarus. You're right. Thank you. And he was at their home. It was like church after dinner. They were all in Mary and Martha's home and... Uh, the rabbi is there. He's their special guest. And Martha is in the kitchen. Some of you ladies can really, you know, they, she is doing the number on the stove and everything else. Mixing things, putting, getting plates. I'm not sure exactly how what all that looked like in that day. But she was busy. She was breaking a sweat. And all of a sudden she said, wait a minute, where is my sister? Where is she? Where's Mary? Is she slacking again? She went into the next room. There's Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to him. And she said, Mary, <clears throat> we've got things to do here. Come on. Where have you been? I need your help. Come on. Jesus looked up at this conversation. He said, Martha, you are busy and worried about many, many things. Mary has chosen the wisest, most important thing. To sit at the feet of the Messiah, our Lord. And so, therein lies what's just happened before chapter 11. I said it this way. Don't forget the most important things in life. And one of those at the top of the list is sitting at the feet of Jesus. By the way, we preachers, when we preach these sermons, we're preaching as much to ourselves as to you. It's a message for all of us. So here we are, and then in chapter 11, and they see Jesus out praying, and one of the disciples says, man, he's praying again. Look out, because big things happen when he prays. And someone else heard that and went over to Jesus and said, Lord, can you pray? Teach us to pray, just like John's disciples. Now, as I look at this passage of Scripture, I, I see five distinct things that Jesus says to the disciples about praying. And I want to share those with you. In your bulletin is that little um, sermon notes thing, and you can fill in the blanks and 
take that home with you or you can take it home later and say, now what was that word? What was this word? Oh yeah, 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 I remember. So I call these the five P's of prayer. P, the letter P. The first P of prayer is what I call prototype. Do you know what a prototype is? Webster's Dictionary says, a prototype is an original model after which something is patterned. One day Jesus was praying at a certain place. He was the prototype. And so we look to Jesus' life to, to pattern our own prayer life. In fact, he does better than that. He said, not only can you see it, I'm going to tell you. The second P is this. Position, the position of the disciples, for you see they were teachable. There may have been some other days that the disciples were not in a teachable mode. You college students, you're in class, right? You're going to class every day, right? Right? Shake your head, yes, this means yes. I'm, I'm here for your parents. <laughs> you're paying money, go to class, and when you are there, be teachable, Okay? Be discerning, but be teachable. Followers of Jesus, we need to be people who are teachable. Lord, teach us to pray. There's a story about, uh, told, told to me is truth. I grew up in Higgins, Texas, a little town in, in the Texas Panhandle. And one of the pastors that was there over the years told me, he said, you won't believe what happened the other day to one of my friends. He, his friend was a young pastor and his wife. They were in another town somewhere in the Texas Panhandle. And they were preaching. He was serving a church. It was one of those old church buildings that's historic that the, uh, instead of this being flat, when you started at the front and you started walking towards the back, it, it went up, right? And it's wooden floors. So when you walked, you don't hear me uh, walking, although sometimes David Player does this and I hear him clear over here, but uh, wooden floors. And at the back of the sanctuary were two double doors that were swinging, swinging doors at the back of the sanctuary. They had a little boy. He was about two and a half to three years old. And he was active with a capital A. And um, he was in the sanctuary every Sunday with his mom sitting. The pastor's up here preaching. And mom and the little boy are sitting right over here. And he got to the place where every Sunday it was a fight. And dad was distracted. I've got, let's see, how many points of my sermon? I and mean, he's always paying attention to what's going on over here. So he and his wife had a family meeting one afternoon. He said, okay, we're going to have to do something about Sunday morning. We love our son, but he's got to learn to, you know, keep that within reasonable bounds. And uh, so we are probably going to have to take him out and discipline him. That meant a spanking, the proper godly use of spanking. And the little boy knew this. He knew what was coming. And so anyway, the dad said, when I, we get to that place, I'll give you the signal and you take him out and discipline him. I don't know what that symbol was, but when I heard this the first time, I was thinking about the third, first base coach for the Texas Rangers. <laughs> I don't know what all their signals are. They're, it's hilarious to watch these guys. But the pastor had the signal, and mom knew what the signal was. Sure enough, next Sunday, little... Uh, Little junior preacher boy over here, he's getting angst and he's just giving his mom fits. And finally, the, the father looks over and he gave the signal. And she got up. Of course, every eye in the church is already over there anyway, right? She got up. She was going to lead him out uh, to go out the... No, no, he fell on the floor. Kabunk! And she took him by the arm and drug him. That's all she could get accomplished. Drug him to the center aisle. By this time, every eye is over there. And uh, when they got to the aisle, oh, she was not happy. She picked that little boy up, threw him over her shoulder so that his face was pointing this way. And she began to walk. Kabunk, kabunk, 
come on. And the little boy is flailing around and the people, are, and just like this, they all turn and they're watching. And when they went, when they, she hit those, uh, <laughs> those swinging doors at the back, the little boy reached out his arms even further with a very panicked look on his face and a very loud voice said, y'all pray for me. <laughs> I've told that story probably hundreds of times. I get to perpetrate it on you this morning, but it was true. And it simply uh, tells us sometimes that's, as adults, we kind of get, that's the only time we're teachable is when we're panicked. So then Jesus says, here's the pattern. When you pray, I want you to say these things like this. And the first one is a movement of prayer. This pattern for prayer begins with praise. Our Father, our Father in heaven, hallowed, holy be your name. That's why I bring a guitar into our prayer time. It's because for a couple of songs, we need to find some ways to make our voices, our spirits, our hearts give praise to the God. Majesty, worship His majesty. To praise God. He's the king of the universe. He's worthy of our praise. And then there's this movement of saying, Yes, Lord, you are God, I am not, and I submit my life to you and your will and your way. Your kingdom come. Let your will be done, not mine, yours. And then this movement that Jesus describes, give us this day our daily bread. It's an acknowledgement that we have a need and that we ask for God's provision in our lives. It's not just about a meal or bread. It's about everything that we need. God provide. And Jesus includes in this pattern a prayer that is confession of sin, repentance, and receiving forgiveness. Don't forget that last part. It's pretty easy to get down on ourselves and say, I am a sinner. I am a sinner. I try every time. I fail. I flunk. I fall flat on my face. God says, if you confess your sins, God is faithful and He is just and He will forgive and purify us from all unrighteousness. Forgive, forgive us of our sins, O oh Lord. But He doesn't end there. There's this other part that the, you know, uh, the fly in the ointment that we have to deal with because He says, Lord, <clears throat> forgive us of our sins in the same way that we forgive others who sin against us. My friend, have you been in the business world and somebody uh, did something bad to you and you lost money? My friend, have you um, been in relationships and that other person who you trusted did bad things to you? Oh, friend, oh, pastor friend. I'll speak to my, my kin, okay? Oh, pastor friend, have you been in the church serving as a pastor and some bishop or district superintendent absolutely knocked you flat on your rear with an appointment or with things and they, they with one fell swoop, pushed you aside? Yeah, we've all been in those situations. Here's what I say. I think Jesus is saying... Forgiveness comes to you, my friend, in the same way and with the same measure that you forgive those who have sinned against you. That's why to hold things in resentment and bitterness and hatred serves not to hurt the person who did the damage. Yes, they did wrong things. Yes, it was damaging. 
Yes, it was painful. But for me to hold those things against them is for me to be bound up in all of the the hard things, the life-changing things of bitterness and hatred and resentment. Father, forgive us of our sins as we forgive others who sin against us. And then Jesus says this, lead us not into temptation. It's a recognition that evil is out there around us all the time and we need deliverance. Anybody in here need deliverance this week from something and the forces of evil that are around you? I do. <clears throat> so this prayer, which is Jesus' prayer given to us, becomes my prayer. Our Father in heaven. Hallowed holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Give us today everything that we need. Forgive us of our sins. Yes, Lord, I hear you. In the same way that I forgive others who have sinned against me. Lead us not into temptation. So there's your pattern. They said, Jesus, teach us to pray. And Jesus said, okay, here it is. Now, you don't have to stick to these exact words. We do every Sunday. I like that because it reminds me of my need to pray. But also, this prayer spawns a multitude of other prayers in my life. The fourth uh, P of prayer is persistence. And he tells this, it's a story that's meant to be funny. Sometimes we, as Americans in this culture, we listen to it and go, Wow, that's kind of brutal. He comes to the house and knocks and, No, I don't have anything. I can't give... I've got my kids in bed and everything. No, leave me alone. Well, okay, they were laughing. The Jews were laughing when he told this story because they could all say, Oh, this is hilarious. When they, in their houses, may have only been one room, there would have been kind of a raised platform at the other end and a lot of the family things happened up there, eating, cooking, sleeping. They would also bring, the rest of the floor was probably dirt, and they would bring their animals inside with them. Oh, think about that. Chickens, a cow, a donkey. But they would bring them in for protection's sake. And once they brought them all in, they would lock the door for protection and get everybody settled down. Mama gets the babies all down. Shh. Don't, okay, no, no, no. Don't say, don't do anything because the donkey has laid down. If you, do, if you do, he'll get back up again. And so here comes this neighbor in this story. Oh. No. And they're all laughing at this story. Jesus is, tells this for a purpose and a reason. And he said, listen, he probably won't give up, get up and go through all this trouble just because he's your friend, but because you keep knocking. He finally say, okay, get up and give him what he wants and get him out of here. God, uh, Jesus is saying, you also be persistent in prayer. God desires that, that we keep asking. Well, okay, then the rest of the story is this. Uh, the, the fifth promises, the fifth P is promises. Let's see that. Can we get that to come up? There, there it is. By the way, in the Greek language, this was all written in the Greek language of the day. And that's why we pastors study those things. And when you look at this in the original language, you say, wait a minute, he's not just saying, here's my best suggestion, ask and seek and knock. No, no, these are words that mean it's a command, a demand. It's a strong word. And he says, you should be asking in prayer and you should be seeking. You know, the Bible says, you'll seek me and you'll find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Not only ask, not only seek, but knock. But the, this is not even as simple as that because the Greek word here is not just ask one time and you're done with it. Seek one time, you're done. Knock one time, you're done. No, this Jesus is saying, 
You be about the business of asking. It's not a suggestion. This is a demand. You be about the business of asking and keep on asking. It's very clear in the grammar of the language. <clears throat> you be about the business of seeking and don't stop. <clears throat> be about the business of knocking. Keep knocking. Sometimes I think about that picture that was painted. Um, it shows Jesus knocking at our door. There's no doorknob on the outside and he's knocking. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone answers that door... And I kind of get the same sense of Jesus keeping on knocking on the door of our lives. Well, he says in prayer, be about the business of asking God, seeking his face, and knocking on the door of heaven. The last thing that um, Jesus brings to point here is these words that are his, it's then final nail. If earthly fathers are imperfect, and we are, and yet these earthly fathers, they know how to give good gifts to their children. All that stuff about the egg and the scorpion and all that, don't miss the point. Uh, earthly fathers are imperfect, but they know how to give gifts to their children. Our grandson is having a celebration of his first birthday today. Do you think we're going to that party with no gifts? Oh, no. We're going with gifts hand over foot. How much more does your heavenly father love you and know how to give you good gifts? My friends, that's good news. I don't have to be perfect. In fact, I'm far from perfect. You're far from perfect. But God loves us. And when we ask and when we seek and when we knock, the Lord gives us good gifts. Number one of which is the very power and presence of His Holy Spirit living within us. Mm. I say, come Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful ones and kindle within us the fire of your love. What is it? a need that you have this week that you're concerned about, that you're worried about for you, for somebody else around you? Let us pray. Father, we thank you for Jesus' word to us. Make us, teach us to pray, Lord, and make us prayer warriors. And out of that, let there come fruitfulness to our lives and joy unspeakable and full of glory. In Jesus' name I pray it. Amen. In this moment, we're going to share a Christian music video that kind of makes the point and adds on to this. I hope that you enjoy it. Often after the sermon here at this church, we have a time of intercession. Okay, one of the reasons I sit so close to the front is because I, I want to be able to beat it down here to the altar. Most every Sunday I say, I want to go down and pour out my prayers before God in, on the altar of this church. Today, just out of the interest of time, we're going to remain in our seats. But I want you, if you're sitting anywhere close by where you can take someone's hand or touch them on the shoulder as a sign of solidarity, we're with, we're with you, we're with each other. We're going to offer our prayers before God in intercession in this moment. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we thank you this day for your holiness and your uh, character that you have shown us over and over again how much you love us. For your self-giving uh, in, in blood and sweat and tears on the cross in Jesus. We confess our sins before you. Lord, we pray for your forgiveness to so impact our lives that you make us again new and fresh people, transformed. We pray for this church. We pray for our pastor, David Player. We lift him up to you. I pray for the ministries of this congregation that impact all of this town and out into the area. We pray for Guyman today, this community. 
uh, so many friends and wonderful people here, different languages that are spoken and cultural expressions. We pray for the people of Gaiman. But we pray for Texas County and beyond into the larger area, the high plains here in America, uh, stretching out from the north to the south to the east, clear to the Rocky Mountains. We pray for the high plains, Lord, today. Help us to express our Christian faith in such a way that it makes a difference in this area. We pray for America. Lord, we watch the news uh, even this week with shock and horror of the things of corruption and graft and violence and hatred. And yet we know that those things are real, but even more real is your mercy and your grace expressed through our lives and the lives of countless millions of Christians across this country. We pray for America today. But we also pray for the world. The Bible describes it this way. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem, which is a way of saying we pray for all people everywhere who are touched by the hand of God, and we pray for the world today. May Christians all around this globe be impacted by your Holy Spirit because of our faithful prayer today. All these things we lift up to you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, let the people of God say amen. Now I forgot one thing. It's on the screen up here, short and sweet. David Player likes to make a big long list of life application. How many of you have said, man, that's a... That's quite a big deal. Or discipleship challenge. Mine is simple. Do we have that up on the screen? Yeah, let's say this together, shall we? With God's help, let us make Victor Memorial a house of prayer. Amen. And amen. Let's all stand together and we're going to close with God be with you till we meet again. First and fourth verse. You received the benediction this morning. Let's see if it'll come up on the screen. From 1 Thessalonians, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Amen. Go in peace.